So we have a little change in the room here. I retro brightened this a year ago, now it's starting to yellow again. This one was severely yellowed, especially in window light like now. You can see the difference there between the keys. Anyway, it's really nice to have these uh, shelves. So here we have the video pack and a broken laptop. I was thinking about uh, repurposing the screen by one of those generic front ends so I can uh, hook up yeah like Commodore 64 or something um, and uh, yeah so these are all the DVDs and the Ingris DS so yeah and here we have a void so and what's that and there you see the amplifier I have showed you before and the amplifier on top there I found a couple of weeks later after this one someone had put this one on the grass because like last uh, like last time when I found this we had um, cleaning spring cleaning if I can call it that and our neighborhood wasn't allowed to put electronics on outside so we had to put it like at the janitor's uh, place where he keeps the, the tractor and stuff but um, and then I don't think people throw out so much when they have to go all that way but this neighborhood where I found this obviously they were allowed to put electronics outside so I found this one uh, the Sub Super Elva is a line of models which uh, is a bit cheaper than the Huldra or TR series from the same era so and we're talking about 70s here early 70s so this model is from I believe in 1973 because it has these uh, metal or aluminium buttons because th there's a, a 11 model which has the plastic buttons so and that one is from 71 or 72 and also the uh, pot meters or the knobs are different also um, the condition is quite nice also it's either it's palisander or rosewood as you say or it, it's uh, teak and uh, it there is quite nice less color on this side and on this side because probably has had sun on this side so I have polished the glass you can see the glass is really nice really mirrory we also look at what works and not works so what I've tested is that when I switch it on I can hear the hum now finally I've gotten some speakers sorry about this this is a Thomson speaker so <laughs> I didn't want to test my, uh, my real B and W speakers so I was afraid they, they uh, blow up or something so um, but I doubt it will do that uh, it's uh, capacitor coupled anyway uh, yeah I got some connectors from my dad So, and the volume knob, it's a split one. So, okay, so the volume knob here is a split one. Uh, you can see, you can turn both of them independently, and they were sticking together. So, what I did was I took it apart. Uh, okay, I don't have to do it now, but there's a plastic. Uh, spacer in there this was full of uh, oxidation aluminium oxidation and fat there's no scratching these are working perfect so now we'll uh, connect it, the speakers on the left side okay Mm -hmm. 
Jay's uh, vintage junk uh, channel. So, uh, he told me it could be the uh, bad transistors in that area, so in the preamp area. So, yeah. And there uh, we have bass and treble and everything's working. This is a. Uh, you can have four speakers. And it's a long road over here with an open contact. And everything's okay. So, I wonder if this has been cleaned. So, but uh, no. And let's get the speaker on again. Okay, now it's on the left channel. Sound is okay. So you have to find the top point, but if you have this AFC, you see that it keeps the channel, sort of locks onto it. And the other problem I have is uh, this AM slider, it's stuck. So people at the uh, Norwegian groups for Tonberg, technical help. They, they tell me to use a heat gun and heat up the uh, AM part because there's a shaft and a bushing or a bearing which has uh, corroded so that means uh, there's fat and, um, and um, aluminium oxidation this is my two years birthday and here you can see the radio in background and I'm all, already onto it. My, my mother says that I was always touching the cables and trying to plug things behind there. And on the TV, you had these wheels you could pull out a uh, drawer and then adjust the channels to, by adjusting some wheels. So I was doing that, and I was also I couldn't walk, so I got some other baby that uh, was uh, visiting us. Someone had a baby with them, so I, I took him with me, and we uh, crawled to the TV, and I tried to show him how to adjust the TV. I don't know why, but my mother tells me that, so... So, yeah. So, I'm happy kid. So, uh, this is a vacation place, anyway. You can see... There's a Tamba radio. I don't know which model it is, but this picture is uh, from 1979 because I was two years old on my birthday there. And this looks like a Tamberg um, cassette deck. So have a look on the net. So yeah, so this is 1976-77. If you go back to the picture, you can see those two lines there. So yeah, there you go. Maybe not the exact same model, but it's uh, probably very close to that one. I don't think it's this one. So. so let's look at the catalog. PDF is nice because then you sure you'll get the right format. So so this is Huldra. It's a mythical fi figure. Um, I think the story goes that uh, a man was sitting and looking at a fire in the forest. And then out of the flames, there comes this woman, Huldra, which um, lures the man to follow her, and then she's gone, I think. <laughs> um, I'm not so good at... Uh, this is uh, in Oslo, actually. It's the factory. Anyway. So let's go see if we can find some... Radius. It looks like oh, there's the uh, 73 model of that cassette player TCD 300. The one we looked at was TCD 310. So reel to reel recorders. So they made TV also. I can go on forever. It looks like so. There, I think the radio is. There you go. There you have it. Alright, here you can see some different way of telling. So, it's a 2 times 30 watt music effect. Note that this is in 4 ohms load. So <laughs> This is also funny. They say central can 
kan de bygge opp et komplett tannverk? This is uh, back in the 70s, saying you or do in Norwegian. You had to man up to say that. Uh, <laughs> you always refer to people as they. So, uh, or uh, your. <laughs> They may build a complete Thunberg music system. The apparatus can connect to Thunberg Hi-Fi speakers and the Thunberg uh, tape recorder or record player. Easy attachments of headphones in front, Silver Super 11. It's delivered with an elegant cabinet in teak, palisander, that's uh, rosewood, or oak. And this is the one I saw in the dumps also. It was missing these sideboards, so, and also it was so heavily scratched, and I think there was something broken here. And I didn't know what I was doing when I was picking up. I hadn't read anything about this radio for a long time, so <laughs> I really regret it now. Yeah. Okay, sitting in my dad's car, he's buying a newspaper, so I don't think I've done that in many years. So going to look at his uh, stereo, old stereo amps, and uh, but actually we're going to help him with some pictures to move from his camera because he's been in France. Oh, well, what are you inside? Jag filmar det, pappa. Ja. Jag filmar. Oj. Här. Mm. Filmar den. Här så. Åh oh, ja. Är det bara... Ja. Ja. Lite sån... Kling igen. Ja, det var på det här som var där. Det är alltid passiv. Mm. Du tar det inte av eller? Nej, jag bara filmar inte. Det är så kul. Uppe där, ja, det är katter. Ja. Hvorfor reise til Sverige når Sverige er kommet til deg? Å se svensk optikk på strømmen, får du svenske priser og gratis synsprøver. Nå er det stedet, ja, nå skjønner jeg. Nå skjønte jeg ikke. Og så er det 2075. 60 vatt. Men, ikke strøm. Ja, det var nesten det. Men, den der... Det er sånn skinn igjen. There we go, 70s electronics, early 70s, so, yeah, power supply, you have three light bulbs, 
So I, conf I think this one is the third. And in the schematic you can also, you can also see that uh, there's a light bulb used as a fuse. So this may be as well as the fuse. So not sure where the regulator is. <laughs> These are high frequency transformers, I think. So they are used for AM and FM. And check out this uh, really nice Really nice electrolytic capacitor. It says uh, made in England. 40 volt DC, 220 microfarads, and the other one is the other one is upside down. So, I so if you want to clean the glass, you can push it out. And here are the disintegrating light seals. I will fix that and show it in the next video. And uh, you basically see there's a uh, bouncing wall for the light. So anywhere here, so you can see the, uh, the lamp is on the metal there. Why is that? That's really weird. So uh, I think what's happening is. <coughs> Lights is uh, shining out into the case, and then it's a roof here, which is pretty bright. Actually, you can see some soot over the uh, the bulbs there. <laughs> when you do that, you get the uh, ceiling bouncing. <laughs> if you know uh, photography, and the ceiling will then uh, bounce down here. So hmm, that makes me think maybe uh, maybe it's not so hard to make a. Uh, a LED replacement. Here you can see the ferrite core antenna and this uh, foam material is disintegrating. Wait a moment, I have some of that. You can see it has uh, fallen down there. It makes a lot of mess. So to clean it up. Actually this is something I bought a while ago. Uh, maybe 10 years ago actually. I had this hobby fixing analog cameras, manual focus, and something I would fail often was these uh, this mirror reflex cameras. Was this mirror was uh, supposed to bounce onto this pad or foam pad, and also you had light seals. <clears throat> you know, if you have a film canister, uh, you have to close the back of the camera, and therefore you need some foam or some filth. So I ordered this on eBay. It was a great seller. It was very helpful. And here you can see little thin ones. You can uh, separate them. So you basically put that in all of these uh, cavities around the canister. And then when you close the lid they will form a light seal. So anyway I do have some left there and the thickness looks about right so I could use some of that here because when I touch this it just uh, falls apart there you have a fuse oh yeah that's the power section so I was talking about that uh, bulb there as a fuse so let's have a look here I have a capacitor 4000 microfarads it says 50 volts so 70, 70 degrees, not the best anyway. And uh, oh, check that pot out down there. There. Wow, check that out. They are open. So there you can see the power supply, and then you have the input 50, 60 hertz down on the right side there. There's some funny stuff here. <laughs> this main switch, which is uh, down here. So, um, you can see that it's, uh, it's connected together with that switch so when you push th this one in and uh, make contact with the mains and the uh, transformer you al also make a contact here on the uh, high side of the power supply so <laughs> i never seen that before uh, please let me know if that's uh, normal for power liner power supplies like this 
And um, here you can see the three light bulbs. Actually, I counted two. <clears throat> so you have the rectifier, so you have 29 volt AC, you get 32 volt DC that's connected together. So when you push the button, you get uh, AC and DC connected at the same time. However, when you switch it off, what happens to the charge here? Well, uh, when you switch it off, the this part here stop, stops charging this capacitor because the power is shut off. However, the charge will still be in this capacitor because this part is disconnected. And what is going on here now? Well, this is the power which goes to the effect transistor, the, the power transistor. So there you see them, and these are 2N5496, 2N5496. Uh, the other transistors here with the heat sinks on, they are all dual transistors, and I think maybe they are this one. I don't know they are this one, but I think maybe are providing the power for biosing because you have to bias transistors like this because they to make them fast and to make the transition from going from pull up to pull down they have to be ready they have to be ready whenever they need to start working because they are not on all the time them they are switched on and off but switching on and off uh, transistors that makes them slow so and also makes some distortion so you have uh, you have them on all the time. So you have to dry them. Also talking about the speakers, so you can select and you can see the contacts back there. See it down there. It's a gang switch. It's quite beautiful. Here you have the FM receiver circuits. You can see it's connected with some threading wire so when I adjust this one you can see how it works quite interesting isn't it you can see it <laughs> you can follow it here right over here and you can see these sliders moving this basically is the uh, FM dial this is a variable capacitor but I can't move it so if I move this one, you can see down there, you have this, um, this is the reason why they feel heavy, by the way. You can see this heavy wheel stack of discs there. Provides some inertia. And uh, you can see down in there where there's a wire connected. You see, they are moving a little bit. And they're trying really hard. To move that shaft on there and they told me on the uh, Facebook group they can use a uh, heater so but that will be for another video if this isn't sexy I don't know what is so things there and check out those transistors check these heads here how large they are compared to the ones you get today so this is the AM section you can see those uh, variable coils, I think, ferret screw in the middle. Yes, of course, they are on the wall there. Oh, you are probably screaming at the screen now. Hey, it's kind of loose. Why? Aren't they supposed to be pressed against the cover here? And check out the soldering down there, it looks like it sucks, so... Yeah, maybe they have been changed at some point. Maybe someone wanted to fix it, so... And also it looks like this one is uh, wired for 220. And uh, I think, and I should know this, I, I should measure it, it should be moved over here for 240 configuration. How slow? Yahoo! Cool. Made in Norway. You don't see that anymore. Almost. So.
So, I'm not sure what these are. Tape funnel. Magnetic pickup, cera ceramic pickup, isn't it? The aimant antenna, you have the 300 ohm and 75 ohm antenna input for FM. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot to learn about this, so yeah. So I will just say thank you for watching and I hope you liked it. Bye bye.